What's up guys, it's Coding Jesus, and in today's video, we're going to be looking at an attribute added in C++17, that being no discard. So what's no discard and how can you use it? All right, no discard is an attribute which is appended to either a function signature or a type declaration to specify that the return value, whether it is from that function or belongs to that type, is important. A second use case for no discard is to disambiguate function calls that have a return value, therefore preventing errors from people using function calls in the wrong way. Let's take a look at an example starting with this second use case. So as I previously mentioned, one of the use cases of no discard is to make sure that the caller of a method understands that the return value of this method call is what's important. That helps disambiguate what the actual method is doing. So let's take a look at this example. We have a vector initialized with one element and we're calling erase on that vector, passing in an iterator to the beginning of this vector. Now a C++ beginner might see this and think, okay, I'm erasing everything starting at the beginning of the vector. But that is not the case. You are only erasing the element at that position, the element that the iterator is pointing to. If I was to add no discard to this call, what I'd end up seeing is I'd end up seeing a warning being emitted because I am not explicitly referencing the return value of this erase call. If I was to see that warning when I'm compiling my code, then what would happen is I'd most likely understand the true meaning of erase and therefore I disambiguate what erase is actually doing. We can see a practical application of this with the call empty. Now what the beginner might understand from the call empty on vector is that it's most likely erasing everything in the vector. I mean, that's a viable interpretation of what empty is doing as a beginner. In reality, what empty is doing here is it's actually checking whether the size of the vector is zero or not. As you can see here, by misusing empty, by misconstruing it to be a clear function, a function that erases all elements in the vector and ignoring the return value, the compiler actually generates a warning for me saying, hey, I don't think you're using this right because you aren't doing anything with the return value. The return value is the important part of this call. And that is because empty in C++20 is actually marked with no discard. It's const expert and it's no discard. So it will generate a compile warning. All right, I hope this use case of no discard, the second use case of no discard, has become quite clear, it has become quite evident. Alan, I will now be moving on to the first use case of no discard that I previously also touched upon. We will take a look at that use case by appending no discard to both function calls and to enumerations, to an error code enumeration. The first use case of no discard, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, is that it marks a return value as being important, something you want to reference, something you most likely want to check. So not only does it disambiguate what a function call is actually doing, thus allowing you to use that function call correctly, it also specifies that the return value is important. What's more important than an error code or an error code generated from a function? As you can see here, I have error code and enumeration that has no discard appended to it. What this means is that every time a function call returns an error code, the compiler will generate a warning if that error code is not captured and referenced. What do I mean by that? Let's take a look at an example. As you can see here, I have the exact same error code that you saw in the previous slide. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to write a function called do something that might fail and it's going to return an error code. And I'm going to return the default value for that error code, but it's probably better I just write it out explicitly. So I'm going to go ahead and do that as error code fatal. Okay, now that that's written, what I'm going to do is I'm going to call do something that might fail and not do anything with the return value. What you're about to see is that I, the compiler actually generates a warning for me. Now what this warning is telling me is that, hey, it's not only that you might not be using this function correctly, but that the error code is actually quite important here. The return value of this function is very important. So what I wanna do is I wanna capture this return value. And because it's important, I most likely want to do something with it. Something that's quite simple that I can do with it, of course, is when you return an error code, you're gonna to wanna to check what that error code actually is. 
So I'm gonna capture the error code and then check what that error code is. For example, if it's fatal, I might wanna do X. If it is just a warning, I might wanna do Y. If it is okay, then I wanna continue execution. And that's what this node discard is helping me do. It's not that second example that we saw previously or the second use case that, hey, you're not using this function correctly. But in this case, it's more so that, hey, an error code is really important. This function returns an error code. And because the error code is important, you, you're going to want to do something with it. It's signaling to us that there is an important return value that we're simply discarding and we shouldn't be discarding it. Interestingly enough, C++20 actually allows us to specify our own custom warning message. So if you're using C++20, you can go ahead and specify your own custom warning message if somebody ignores the return value as I'm doing as such. Now I'm removing some of this code such that I'll trigger that warning. And as you can see, once this program compiles, I have my own little custom warning down there. Now above and beyond, and no discards application in error codes, it can also be appended to the signature of functions, accentuating the importance of a function calls return value. It should probably be also appended to allocations because what's the point of allocating something by calling make shared or make unique if you're not actually gonna do anything with that allocation? As, and as an extension on top of that, it can also be used or applied well in factory methods or in the factory pattern. Because what's the point of creating something via factory if you're not actually going to use the return value that's generated for you? So with that, that's the end of the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something about no discard here. Thanks for listening to this video, guys. Give me a thumbs up if you liked it. Double tap thumbs down if you didn't, just to show me how much you didn't like the video. And also subscribe to this channel, guys, if you want the latest and greatest in coding Jesus. I have a Discord in the description box below, which you can also check out. Cheers, guys.